whether it's data mining or social media or locksmith, talk to us about the writing process with the research. How do you meld those if you're spending so long doing the research? Sure. Well, in preparation for this, I had jotted down a few of the uh, distillation of my writing course, just a few points. And this gives me the chance to jump in with what I think is maybe the most important. And you have to understand, I'm not telling other people to do this. I'm simply saying this is what has worked for me mm. and I'm comfortable with it. Uh, and the research is part of it, but more important is the outlining. Um, the world is divided into two sorts of writers, the plotters and the pantsers. Yep. The plotters are those who plot and outline. The pantsers are those who go by the seat of the pants. Uh, one is not right or wrong. I, however, am only comfortable outlining. And I do recommend to my students that um, they know where they're going before they start. Um, uh, Joyce Carol Oates said, you can't write your first sentence until you know what your last sentence is. Oh, and wow. I, firmly, I firmly believe that. And so we'll talk about how I approach it. Now, I am a pathological outliner. I know no one else in the world that outlines this much. And I'm not, obviously, I'm not recommending it. I'm simply saying this is what works for me. And so I come up with an idea for a book and I may have a great bang up first chapter, but I don't write it. I put, keep that in my mind. And then I, I start outlining the book. And um, I spent eight months doing that and the research. And when I say outlining, I start with, uh, a big bulletin board with uh, post-it notes. And uh, I'll put a, a note here. Okay, you need a murder here. Okay, a clue here that explains the revelation here. I'm not, you know, imagine this is the board. And I put, put this, down. I do that for probably three months. And then I, oh, wow. uh, then I move to the computer and keep outlining it. And I'm doing the research and the research informs the outline. It informs my, my plot. And uh, so finally, at the end of that eight months, I have a, uh, the, the Midnight Lock outline was 140 pages or so. It's just the outline. Oh and I had I had a couple hundred pages of research uh, as well. Now, and then I sit down and, and write the book. Now, I'm going to explain why the outline, why I feel the outline is important. Wait, wait, before you talk, oh, sure, go further. Sure. Do it, you can post it later, but I would love to see a picture of your bulletin board with the stickies and the outline. Have you oh, ever okay. taken a picture of it? I, I I may have one. I'm actually at the point now where I'm writing the book, so the stickies have come down, so it's oh. a blank bulletin board. But I but I can certainly uh, you know I'm sure you have a website uh, you know uh, Friends and yeah. Fiction, so I can send a picture of that. So oh, we'd uh, love to see it. Okay, because, sure. Yeah. Now, now, I'm gonna, cool. now I'm going to sell outlines, and I don't know whether your <laughs> pants is your plot is, but I'm going to sell outlines. I'm going to tell you uh, there are several reasons why there should be outlines. And I'm going to say um, say this. Uh, have you ever read a book that should not be written? Yes, of course we have. Yes. <laughs> and I'll tell you how that happens. Let's say you come up with a brilliant idea for a, a set piece beginning. That chapter one, that is incredible. It is, uh, by set piece, I mean an action piece, a very emotional scene. It may not necessarily have anything to do with the uh, with a crime. It could be an emotional uh, set piece beginning, two characters talking and bonding or fighting or something like that. But it is a scene that is fantastic. And you sit down and you write it and bang, that scene comes out just like that. And you go to set chapter two, you keep going, the energy's up chapter three, chapter four, chapter four slows down a little bit. You're not quite sure what these characters are going to do, going to do chapter five, slower yet, chapter six, stop. You don't know what's going to go on. And you, you're looking at the rest of the book. Now you've written 150 or 200 pages of very good prose because you're a good writer. Uh, you can put the words together, but you're looking at um, a, a, a middle and you, the dreaded middle. What are you going to put in there? And then your end, your big surprise ending, and every book has to have a big surprise ending. There's none there. You don't know what to do. Yeah. And so you, um, uh, you, think, you think about it for a while and all you can come up with is uh, cliches for the, the middle of the book, you know, the detective and his captain have a fight and the detective has to give up his badge and gun. Have we ever seen that before? Yes, a thousand, <laughs> thousand times. And then the end, you know, the, the villain uh, comes out of left field. We never met the, the villain before. And uh, you were then presented with two choices and you're gonna kind of figure out how I feel about this. One is the um, morally cowardly, reprehensible, intellectually dishonest thing and fill that story with cliches and tack on that terrible ending <laughs> and put that out for your readers. 
And that's a sin. Why? Because the readers are our gods. We owe them everything. We cannot give them a the substandard product. Our gods. I love exactly. that. Exactly. Well, now, or choice two, which you've probably gathered, is the morally honorable, uh, ethical, intellectually honest thing, and throw out every damn page. Um, because it's not going to be a book. And if you wrote a good, uh, you start on something else. If you've written a good uh, chapter one for a bad book, think of the chapter one you'll write for a good book.